Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you my cinema rig for my Nikon Z8. I find it funny and fascinating how the marketing works because everybody now is mentioning Nikon Z8 or Z9 as great tools to create cinematic videos or like cinema work or whatnot just because Nikon has bought red. Before that, everybody's silent. Like Nikon Z8 and Z9 have been out for a while now and they have always been absolutely great when it comes to video as well because the color science is really, really good. The lenses are super good, assuming you wanna use AF lenses, Nikon brand. And in general, you have a lot of versatility because you can record internal RAW, you have a lot of resolutions, even full 8K, a lot of different frame rates. So the cameras are really, really good. They even come with a waveform, which is something that not all the cameras have actually. So anyway, um, I, today I wanna show you how I make my cinema rig. Most of the parts are based on a small rig uh, setup because I think that they have it nailed down by now and all the parts that I use have been rock solid in multiple occasions. Small Rig is not sponsoring this video. If they want to, they're more than welcome to in the future because I really stand by their product. I really think that they do great stuff. So without further ado, let me show you how I make my Nikon Z8 rig. And I'm gonna take my cart and place all the parts here laid out nicely for you so you can take a look and we can start the build. All right, the first thing that we need is the Nikon Z8, which is right here in my bag. It's now set up as a photo camera, let's say. You can see there is the small rig L bracket, which has Arca Swiss mounting points for uh, the camera, which I love. And this allows me to basically rotate the camera very quickly. All my tripods are basically using Arca Swiss clamps and things like that. You'll see in the rig as well. So the first thing I need to do here is remove the Peak Design strap, which is connected to the camera. I'll just leave it there. And then I can unscrew the L bracket as well. I love that the new small rig stuff has all the components, all the tools to actually uh, screw and unscrew the bolts. Because although I have tools to do that, obviously, but it's so handy to just have an extra tool. And this is the L bracket by small rig. It's pretty solid, pretty good. You can also adjust the uh, distance between this side and the other side which is handy sometimes if you have cables connected for tethering or things like that. I'm just gonna put this one here, we don't really care about that. And so this is my bare Nikon Z8. Now, the first thing that we need is the cage. I'm gonna put these two in the other bag. This is the actual cage, the small rig cage that I use on the Nikon Z8. And these cages are made specifically for each camera, if you are new to this, but you want to make sure that you buy the cage specifically for the camera that you want to use. You basically place the cage into the camera sort of, and then you screw it on. Even here, there is the tool to basically screw and secure the cage onto the camera. Very simple. Just like that. Make sure nothing is blocking anything. That's it. Now you wanna give it a good tug because when you have a lot of stuff on this, you wanna make sure everything is solid, but it seems pretty good. So this can go back. There we go. Now we have the base. Now, one thing that you have to pay attention to is that on the right side here, I do have a NATO clamp here, which is sort of like a reverse of the Arca Swiss sort of mount, uh, but it's because I have to attach something to it. Okay, so there is two X bolts here um, that you screw this clamp onto and basically becomes part of the of the cage. You can see here there are more holes on this side and these holes are essentially 
um, so that you can screw that kind of accessory on it. So now we have our camera with the cage. Now in my bag, I already have pre-set up part of the rig, which is consisting of a couple of different things. So I'm gonna break this down for you so you guys can see properly uh, each part, okay? I think it's interesting that you can see how everything is set up already before, you know, like we separate everything because this gives you an idea. Essentially, this is ready to go for me and I can just take the Z8, place it here and clamp it down. And essentially this is almost good to go with the exception of the lens. And so I am very quick in getting the camera ready this way. But obviously this is something that you have to set up. So let's do it together. First of all, I have a bunch of parts. I'm gonna place everything here. So that you can see exactly what it is, each part. All right, so we start with basically the rods. Now these rods are the base of your rig. Everything will be clamped to these rods and they will hold the rig together. So it's very important you get good quality rods. Now there are carbon fiber ones that are lighter. These are a little bit heavy, but when the rig is all done, it's gonna be heavy, so it's good to save on weight, but the thing that I don't like is that the carbon fiber ones, at least the small rig ones, cannot be extended. You cannot add another rod onto this, in which you can with the steel ones, with the specific thing that I'll show you afterwards. And then I also have these basically screw caps that close the hole of the rod, and that's not just for beauty look, but they have the O-rings, uh, next to the cap, which basically seals so that if I suppose there is rain coming in or water somehow, it will sort of like seal that um, hole. And also what they do, they prevent accessories to slide out of the rod as well. So you just screw them in like that and then you have a capped rod. Okay, so now the other parts that I have here are this clamp. Basically, this is your base plate. Okay, so I have a Manfrotto base plate here, which is what goes on the tripod. And on top of the base plate, I have the base cheese plate, which is essentially this um, base that small rig has where you put the rods into. So just like this, right? So now you can adjust your camera across the rods with this plate. Uh, now this is the tripod plate and this is the rig plate. So there are two different things, although they are both called plate as far as I know. And uh, on top of this plate, I've added a Arca Swiss clamp, which allows me to basically connect the camera quickly and disconnect it quickly. You will see why once the rig is ready. Just to give you an idea, I can separate this real quick. So you guys can see. How this looks like. There we go. And this is the clamp basically that you mount on top of the, sorry, this is the base plate, the rig plate that you mount on top of the uh, triple plate. And this is the Arca Swiss plate that you can put on top of this like this. So you can see the uh, base plate has a bunch of holes, threaded holes where you can build um, basically screw stuff on. And so that's what I usually do. I just connect is basically onto my attachment and get it set up in there nicely. Um, 
Now there are a lot of different ways that you can go about this. It depends a lot on what you are looking for in terms of final rig. Uh, there are some important uh, consideration to make in terms of where the plate is set and there is another problem here that I still haven't fully solved which is that this plate here this Arca Swiss plate is currently only attached to the rig plate with one screw it's a big screw so it's pretty solid but I don't like that whenever I can I always try to connect everything with two screws because that prevents rotation right so right now if i really do hard here i can rotate this clamp a little bit this is not a big problem when the camera is on here uh, hasn't been a problem so far but it's not something i am super super happy about so still something to improve but in any case this becomes one unit and then what we can do here is put our rods through this unit and this parts come with these little clamps that you basically tie them and you can set in position okay so like this try to make this straight there we go so now you have this part the other parts that i have is this is just a sort of like a cheese plate with the rods holes in there that you can put on the here you can mount stuff on it because there is threaded holes everywhere i usually use it to stabilize sort of things um, it's just good to have as a support and sometimes it turns out to be useful to also um, essentially mount things on it now what i try to do is that as a memory exercise wherever i have the logo in this case the small rig logo that's my front so that's where my camera will be oriented towards or the lens will be oriented towards so that i always know if this is behind the lens or this is in front of the lens right the other part that i have is this it consists of two parts this is a plate a v-mount plate against small rig and this is a small rig battery should be fully charged yeah 98 percent uh, which i absolutely love because it has all the connections that i need they just came out with a new battery now the pro v99 pro that has even more connections and is a lot more powerful as well and bigger to in capacity so i'm gonna upgrade to one of those as well uh, but this one has been pretty good so far uh, it can power a lot of stuff and I will have another video in terms of USB-C and USB power device because I think that's gonna, that's been a very big change in the last couple of years that um, you know people that do audio and video work really appreciate so this battery goes onto this V-mount plate we just connect it like this and it snaps into place becomes one solid piece again this plate has millions of threaded holes where you can plug stuff but doesn't really matter for this and then i put this battery in the back and i just tighten it temporarily when you tighten these things for now just tighten them not too strong because you don't know exactly the spacing of all the parts and then i would like to put this um, other clamping thingy basically just in the back as well right behind the battery sort of like a support and just to strengthen a little bit the the rig that way uh, the other component that i have is this one and this is a small rig follow focus essentially allows me to connect this little gear onto the lens and then adjust the focus that way so that I don't have to adjust it on the lens, but I can sort of like remotely in a way um, control the focus. And this one has to go in the front. Now, because I have the caps on, I cannot really put it back in there. So I have to take the cap off and then put it mount in there and then put the cap back on. Then I can put my caps back here. Like 
we go. And tighten, you don't want to tighten this too much. It's aluminum on aluminum. I think these are aluminum, I don't remember if it's steel, maybe steel, but in any case, it's metal on metal, so you don't need to overdo it if you don't want to break something. And then now this is basically where we were started and uh, it's almost a ready to go base. I can put my camera here. Make sure I have the space. Like that, then I can torque this and my camera ain't gonna go anywhere. There we go. Okay, so this starts becoming something now. Of course, we have to place the lens. Now, the cool thing about this setup is that if I undo the base plate clamps here, I can slide the camera back and forth. And if you have cinema lenses, the focus rig, the focus gear, sorry, will always be at the same distance, but you might need more space between the lens and the camera, depending on the built of the lens. And so this way I can just slide the camera around quickly without worrying too much about where it goes. And um, I don't have to really move the follow focus that much. I could move the battery back a little bit just to give me some more space, but it's not really necessary. Okay, there we go. Now let me get a lens. 35, 1.5, rocking on here. And these ones are Nikon F lenses, so I have the adapter that goes to F to Z. And there we go. Now we have our lens mounted there. And as you can see, I have to adjust my um, focus, follow focus here like that. And this will allow me to essentially control my lens. Hopefully you can clearly see this, but that's how it works. And if you have a remote follow focus system, wireless follow focus system, you do the same thing. It's just basically a matter of placing it in a different place, right? Um, so this is our base rig. Now, of course, it's not finished because we need the cabling and the monitor but you have all the parts here to start creating your rig. Now, when you have a rig like this, obviously you don't want to hold it from the camera. So we're going to need a couple of things there. And the two parts that I usually use is the handle here, side handle, and then the top handle. Okay, so the top handle will easily mount into the predisposed area on the on the cage you want to make sure to tighten that very well okay to make sure that this doesn't move and then I have the side handle now this side handle here I usually put it on this side on the left side because on the right side I like to have my follow focus system, the remote follow focus system. But even right now, I can hold this with one hand on the left. Of course, it's not very stable. So you still want something on the right side. And the other thing that I don't like is that this can tilt now because the handle is not aligned with the base. But sometimes you really cannot do a lot about it because the cage doesn't allow you to put that fully on below, basically that baseline. Otherwise, I would always do that. On the right side, could be possible. But this is set up for the left side right now. So I'm gonna stick to that. Also this, 
a handle CR can be placed either on the left or on the right side. You just unscrew these bolts that are in here and you change the clamp to be on the other side. So very, very versatile, very, very good and easy system. You wanna make sure all this stuff clamps 100%. You definitely don't want to have a problem where this comes loose. Okay, so now on the right side, I'm just gonna put my follow of August system um, for now, even though that doesn't make sense because I have the manual one. But you might wanna need, you might need another handle or something that you wanna use. For me, this is great and it works pretty well. I can also remove this top part and just use this as a handle. Again, it's pretty solid. And this is why I have this clamp here that I pointed out at the beginning, because this is where my, um, let's say, fall of August handle mounts, right? So now I have a solid grip on both sides. This is a little bit wobbly, so it might need to be tightened a little bit more. Notice that right now I'm all doing this with this stupid little thing that came with the cage, but you might want to have a proper tool, which I do have. I have something that I use just for that. And in particular, I have the small rig uh, tool, multi-tool, which has this super, super handy, fat, flat screwdriver. I think this is the best thing they've done because I absolutely love this. Yeah, you can use a coin, but sometimes it's annoying. Instead, with this, you have everything you need. And they have all the hexagonal um, keys that you might want to, the hexagonal tools that you need in the small rig accessory range. And they also have another flat, sorry, another uh, Phillips screwdriver here and a what well, seems to be a sort of like a Torx Torx head here, which I'm not sure what this is used for. Yeah, Torx 25 says. I don't remember using any Torx on this stuff, but anyway, I'm just gonna leave it here for now in case we wanna use it. And by the way, on this handle here, it doesn't have to be like this. I have the cap. There we go. Put this into place. Like that. And this becomes one thing. And this one has also the button to start recording, although I don't think this works with the Nikon. It only works with the Sony cameras, I think, or it needs anyway a USB connection uh, to make it work. But right now, you can see that this is already a pretty good rig, solid, works well. I can control the focus here if I need to, if you have the remote follow focus, or even here if it's on a tripod. And if I need to do something uh, quick that is not necessarily on the rails, I can take this off altogether, still have the handles, and then do low shots or things like that. Then when I'm done, again, place it back in. Ideally, undo this first. Make sure that the camera is probably set in there. Then lock it in and we are back in business. Locking this up and we are back in business. Okay, so this is the idea. Now this part here on the top of the handle is where I put the monitor. You can screw the monitor here. And this is basically your rig. And the other, the last thing you need to do is to put all the connections here. For this example, I'm gonna put the monitor on it as well, so you can really see how this works. Okay. This is an Atomos Ninja 5 monitor. It's always annoying, I have this protection, um, silicone protection that Small Rig has as well. She's super, super good. Again, that's the monitor. Now the monitor can be powered by the small rig battery. So it can be D-tap and then can go into the HDMI and of the camera, just like that. 
not gonna connect it right now, but you can see how this works. Okay, so this brings you um, strong rig. You have your monitor, you have your handles here. You can see, move everything around, do your work. Pretty good stuff. Very simple, but very functional, which I absolutely love because when you are running and doing things quickly, you know, the last thing that you want to do is having to deal with problematic connection or problematic pieces. This is absolutely straightforward. A couple of clamps, put things together, and now my camera is ready to go. Uh, now, the other thing that I wanted to show you is the um, shoulder mount, which is basically an extension of this. So you can put extra rods, extended rods, and put a shoulder mount, shoulder mount in there. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna remove the monitor for simplicity of handling here. You get the idea anyway with the monitor. Okay, I'm gonna put the monitor away. Uh, by the way, just a little advice, the monitor as a screen protector, so as the camera, these things can really save your butt in a pinch, essentially, when you are doing work that is a little bit rough and you know, you're doing things quickly. So it's always a good idea to actually have this kind of safety. As you can see, I have the rubber silicone cover on the monitor. The monitor has the screen protector, the camera top screen and back screen. Also I have the screen protector. It's just the extra safety that costs like what, 20 bucks maybe, total maybe 30 bucks and saves a situation where you might need to stop shooting or you can have some other sort of problem. So I always like to have that kind of extra safety. Okay, so we keep that. Now my shoulder uh, rig is in this bag here where I have a bunch of accessory for mounting stuff. So I have a bunch of extra bolts that I always have with me in case something breaks or gets lost. Then I have a bunch of parts here in these boxes. These are Plano containers, so you can buy them on Amazon, um, where I can basically organize all the stuff. And there is a couple of parts that I need here. And then inside of this bag, yeah, I have a lot of stuff because this is essentially the build bag. So. I have lots of audio stuff divided into these pouches. I have some electrical stuff. So I have camera charging, uh, um, accessories, cables, extra batteries, uh, readers, card readers, and all sorts of things. And then finally, I have the extension for the shoulder rig that we're gonna mount now. Then I have a bunch of other things here that don't really matter right now like tape, tape is always good, and a couple of other things. This bag is always with me on any cinema shoot or video work, whatever you wanna call it. And here I have these two little extenders, which are essentially to extend the uh, rods. So one part, oops, one part goes into one rail and the other part goes in the other rail and you can mount the rods to the other rods essentially which i left in the bag all right so now these rods are not the same as those ones are rods that i had from another kit i didn't need to buy extra ones because i don't need this to be too long and these ones are actually cool because they come from a universal camera mount um sorry they come from a universal camera cage and that I had uh, some time ago before Small Rig had the actual cage for the Z8, I was using that. And uh, they have all threaded holes everywhere as well. So I can mount stuff on them, which is pretty cool. And so what I do here is that I shift everything essentially um, backwards a little bit. So in the back, I'm gonna undo I'm gonna show you like that.
removing the caps, I'm gonna screw in the extended rod, this screwing all the way. Okay, and then I can mount these ones on there, like so. There we go. Now they are not completely aligned. I don't really care. This has a flat part here. It doesn't really matter to me as long as this is good support. We can still put the caps in the back there, but before we do that, we need the shoulder pad. So this shoulder pad is probably the only part here that is not really small rig because I found this one to be more supportive as a much better sponge um, that sits on the shoulder nicely and uh, um, I found it better, so I just bought this one. I don't remember what brand is it. Might have been a newer brand or something like that. I just simply put this one like so, again on the rods. Can I put the caps here just for now? So we don't lose them. Okay, and now you have this extra long situation here. The battery can slide all the way back. Like that. Okay, and then now I can slide the camera back as well. I'm gonna do the follow focus first. Undo the camera, slide it back, and move it like that, and then slide the follow focus back where it needs to be. Perfect, and then I have to remove the caps and slide the handles for the shoulder mount, okay? Again, this one comes into the rods just like that. And then you can torque it from the bottom, just like that. Then I put my caps back in. And there you have it. Okay, so now we have a shoulder mount. So I'm gonna come down like this, and then I can shoot easily like that, look at the monitor and be able to do all sort of work. And there is still some space on the side here to essentially go forward and backward if I need to adjust this positioning. Now, when you do this, sometimes the handle is a little bit in the way, but you can definitely adjust that to your convenience. And there you have it. This is basically all the rig. Now, when I am to do switch between shoulder mount shots, for example, and handle shots, because I have this clamp here, the only thing I need to do is undo my follow focus, undo the clamp and then take the camera and I'm ready to go and held or maybe put this on a gimbal by removing the handles. Um, or I can just operate just like this by hand but quickly, I don't have to waste time. And then I can put it back in, screw it, lock it back in place. Again, reconnect the follow focus and I'm ready to go. All right, so that gives you an idea for your next Z8 rig. I can easily put it on my shoulder, do all my shoulder work. If I don't need the shoulder pad, it's easy to remove quickly. Um, it's just literally those two parts plus the extra rods. If I have to use the camera handheld, again, it's just quick undo of the clamp and the camera is free. And then to put it back in place, again, the reverse. But this has worked great for me. It's a super solid setup, never had any problem with it. And when you add a follow focus system that is wireless, like the remote 
wireless follow focus system it's actually pretty pretty good because you can also place the camera very quickly on the tripod remember that the Manfrotto plate is right there on the very bottom of the whole rig so this can hold go on the tripod like that although it's a little cumbersome with the shoulder mount but it does work pretty well and so yeah there you have it that's your Z8 rig small rig 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 let me know what you think if you have questions feel free to put them in the comments if you like the video like it and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.